Welcome to the Sandbox Training. In this training, we'll learn how to add repeatable game mechanics with rules. This is a medium difficulty activity using game rules with object logic. We'll learn the basics of the game rule system and how to apply it to more engaging game mechanics that can be used repeatedly. This unlocks more gameplay varieties and custom player HUD. We'll open an experience from the previous activity and reuse some of its logic. So what are rules? The game rule system is a visual scripting tool located in the gameplay menu. It allows you to set, use, and change values such as numbers, text, time, and true false values for your gameplay needs and control what appears on the player HUD or heads up display. It's important to stay organized in the game maker. You can group rules into rule sets any way you'd like. You can group objects in the hierarchy using folders. You can find messages sent and received with the message inspector in the debug menu. And you can manage messages used in your experience in the settings menu. First, let's take a look at triggering the rules by joining the game. A rule needs to be triggered by a message in to carry out its actions. It can then trigger objects, other rules, etc. Some rules can also be interrupted with a message. We'll begin with a simple pop-up window that appears when a player enters the game. Let's go to our rules by hitting gameplay and expanding the window to full screen. The first rule we'll add is under game screen. We'll choose pop-up window. We'll zoom in. The required message will make player joined. We can add a welcome title and a description. The second rule we'll add is under events. We'll choose on player join and the message to send is also player joined. If we exit the rule board and hit tab to test, the pop-up window appears as soon as the experience starts for you. For now, let's set the pop-up window rules required message to none so that the window won't pop up every time we press tab to enter the game and test the logic. Now let's take a look at variables. We'll use a text variable in a rule. We use text variables to show status, player location names, setup notices, and more. Let's create our first variable and a rule to use it. We'll click on variables, we'll click the plus sign, we'll choose a text variable, we'll keep the variable as global, we'll name it area, and for value we'll put banner text. Hit create. Now let's create a rule. We'll go to rules. Under game screen, we're going to hit banner. The required message will be night. The duration will use a fixed value of five seconds. Under variable, we'll choose our new area variable. We'll also name it area. And we'll choose a nice icon. For this, we'll use the map. And now to test. In a previous activity, the message night is sent any time the player enters an object's trigger volume. The banner will only display the words banner text, which is the value saved in the variable. Now let's take a look at overriding a text variable and reuse it. We'll create a message with arguments to send different text to the rule system depending on where the player is located in the game world. First, let's grab a logic asset with these settings. Then we'll duplicate this logic asset and change it to these settings. Now we need to create a rule to overwrite the variable's text with the message arguments. We'll create a replace variable value. We'll choose set text value. The required message will be the area message. We'll choose our area text variable and under new text, we'll choose message argument and make sure our area name argument is selected. Now, if we hit tab to test, the banner rule doesn't use the text argument sent with the message, but still works. The rule that sets the banner text uses the argument text included with the message. Next, let's look at triggering objects. For this, we'll learn how to shoot projectiles by using the keyboard. 
We'll create a preset of the following asset, making sure to delete it after we save it. We'll grab a numpad with these settings. With these settings, the projectile will cause 100 damage if it hits an object that has the tag Artifact, which was applied to objects in a previous activity. Now let's create a pickable object with the child object that spawns the projectile preset. We'll grab the Dragon Egg asset and apply these settings. Next, we'll add another numpad switch with these settings. Once we have both assets created, we will hide our asset spawner within the dragon egg and make it a child of the dragon egg. Now we need to add the key input rule to trigger the projectile and spawn whenever a key is pressed. We'll go to gameplay, rules, key input. We'll select key one and the message to send when you press the key down will also be one. We hit tab to test. Pressing the one key shoots a projectile from the dragon egg anytime. If we pick up that dragon egg with E, we can shoot all the ancient artifacts with the projectile. Since an object that is picked up can't send or receive messages in the current version of GameMaker, we've created a child object to be the asset spawner. The projectile behavior triggers as soon as the object it's applied to is spawned. Now let's use the rule system to count resources with a number variable. We'll place the treasure preset from the last activity and we'll modify its collectible component so it will send a message to the game rule system whenever it is collected. We'll save this preset over the old version and we'll delete this when we're finished. So now on our ancient treasure A, we'll go to the collectible component and change the message on collect to treasure.collect. We'll change the broadcast type to all. So each time this object is collected, this message will be sent to all systems. We'll now save this ancient treasure A over our old preset to update them. Now let's duplicate the ancient artifact asset till there are at least 20 in the game. We'll spread them out. Now let's create the following variable and rules to track and display money. We'll go to our rule system. We'll add a new number variable. We'll name it money with value zero. Next, we'll add a math rule with these settings. To be able to see the money collected, let's add a rule to show it on the player's HUD. Create a game screen rule with these settings. Now, as we destroy the ancient artifacts and collect the treasure that drops, we'll see the amount of treasure collected, 100 per treasure, appear in the top of the screen. Each time we collect the treasure, which is a preset, we're sending a message to a custom location. In this case, it all goes to all locations so it will reach the rule system and increase your money when collected, which appears on the HUD slot you selected. Next, we'll look at how to make resources in your game. First, we'll create an NPC to sell different types of items to players, equipment to wear, consumable item, and a resource to be shown in the player HUD. We'll add a Bazaar Merchant NPC with these settings. Next, let's create a preset object to spawn when purchased. We'll start with our food item. We'll add a various fruits asset with these settings. Once we have our food created, we'll make a preset and delete the original. Next, let's create some asset spawners for items to purchase and collect. We'll add a logic asset with these settings. Next, we'll do another logic asset to spawn our shop to item to spawn our food preset with these settings. Next, let's add variables and rules for the resources that will be tracked by a number and displayed in the HUD. We'll go to our gameplay rules. We'll add a new variable, we'll label it wood. Now let's add a new math rule with these settings. 
Now let's add a spot on the HUD to display our wood amount. We'll add another HUD rule. Player joined message. We'll choose a bottom slot and select our wood variable. We'll give it a name and an icon. Next, let's add a shop rule preset to save time on the rest of the setup. We'll go to presets, we'll choose shop, and it will instantly add all the rules required to make a shop work in the game maker. We already set up the add money HUD and player join rules earlier in this activity. You can remove the ones in this pre-made rule set. The remaining rules allow you to test if you have enough money to buy two types of items and pay from the money variable if you do have enough. You have three items in your shop, so select and duplicate a success, fail, and pay rule in this rule set to add what's needed for your third item. We'll rename item one rules to purchase food success, purchase food fail, and pay food. Rename item two rules for equipment and item three rules for wood to make it easier to track what each rule does in your custom setup. Next, let's set the price of each item and the success and fail rules. So it will check if you have enough and send a message if you don't. We'll set the food cost to one, equipment cost to four, and wood cost to two, as an example. The messages sent by each rule matches the rest of the logic in the activity, but you can use custom messages to keep track of things more easily. Finally, let's add a text variable and a rule to inform players when they don't have enough money. We'll add a new text variable. We'll label it purchase status and the description. Lastly, we'll create a rule banner with the required message, shop purchase failed, the fixed value of to display of five seconds and a variable with purchase status. And now to test. If we destroyed some artifacts and collected treasure, you have money to spend with the merchant. You can set custom costs for each item in the rule system and spawn any type of item you'd like or add resources for gameplay using variables. Try opening your inventory where the equipment you've purchased or consuming the food item that triggers the speed power up. The purpose of the items you buy are completely up to you. The game rule system is a powerful visual scripting tool running behind the scenes to manage information and gameplay. Other rule presets make it easy to track points, add time trials, set poison or hunger for players, and more. It's possible to build complex resource management system where messages with argument triggers amounts of resources to be traded or purchased. With rules, you can even define what variables are for all players and which ones will be tracked differently for each player. We'll explore that in the next activity.